Hey everyone, welcome back to my DIY Home with Liz. I am so excited for today's projects. I have three trash to treasure projects to share with you. So if you'd like to see how I put together these projects, just keep watching. first project that I picked up at the thrift store was this really cool clock and I spent five dollars on it which was a little much for me but I really love the shape of it and I knew I could turn it into something amazing. So I decided that I wanted to paint this clock. So I'm going to first start out by taping around the edges. So I got out some blue painters tape and I'm just going to tape around the clock face. So next, I'm going to be painting with my favorite paint color, which is Duck Egg by Annie Sloan. I love the color of this. So I'm just gonna do two coats on the entire clock. Once the two coats has a chance to dry, I'm just going to remove the painter's tape. From there, I'm going to wet distress. Now, I get a lot of questions on what is wet distressing. So you wanna make sure that your piece is dry. You know, just let it dry for a few hours at least. Then you're gonna take any wet rag and you're going to make sure that it's saturated but you wanna wring it out. From there, take your rag and then you're just going to gently wipe off your piece like you would with sandpaper and it's going to pull the paint off of there. It's going to wet the paint and pull it off of there. So your rag is going to have paint on it when you're finished with this process. But it's just another way to distress. I find it to be rather easy and I just enjoy the way that the finish looks. And here's the final project sitting out on my dresser in my bedroom. Okay, so the next piece is kind of a silly piece, but when I saw it at the thrift store, I knew immediately what I could do with it. So I found this brochure stand, and it's one of those brochure stands that holds like two brochures, and I found it for $1.50, but I had this idea that it would look so cool with some flowers in it. So I went ahead and grabbed it and thought it would make a fun little DIY project. So I'm going to use the same paint that I used in the first project, the Duck Egg by Annie Sloan, and I'm gonna do two coats on the entire brochure stand. I'm gonna use that same technique of wet distressing and I'm going to distress around this piece. I'm actually gonna pull off more paint on this piece than I did on my previous piece, but that's the fun thing. Some things you can distress more and some things you can just do the edges. So just do whatever your preference is. I picked up this black basket from Dollar Tree and I thought this would be a really cool piece to put in the little inset pieces in the brochure stand. So I'm just gonna cut off one side of my basket. You need some pretty sharp scissors to cut the basket. From there, I'm gonna make little pieces that are gonna fit down into the brochure stand. So I'm just gonna cut a rectangle and then I'm just gonna keep cutting off the sides until it fits in snug. Once I was able to fit it in there, mine didn't need any additional hot glue, but you may need to add some hot glue to hold it in place. Mine was so snug that it just kind of fit into place. 
To finish this piece off, I picked up a bundle of tulips from Walmart. This bundle was only $3, and I think they're much better quality than the ones you can grab at Dollar Tree, so I would recommend getting them at Walmart. So I pulled the tulip off of the stem that they came on, and then I'm just going to set them in my brochure stand. I also pulled off the leaves and put those in as well. And here is the final project. You guys, I love this. Let me know below what you think of this. I know it's a little bit different, but I just love the way it turned out. I was so excited when I found this planter box. It was $6, which meant I got it for $3 on half price day. But this was a good size planter box and I knew this would be perfect for an herb garden. So I decided that I wanted it to be elevated. So I went out and purchased four spindles at Habitat for Humanity and I got them on clearance. So I ended up spending a dollar for all four spindles. So they were a little long, so we did have to cut the spindles down. And then I enlisted my husband to help me with attaching them to my planter box. All right, so after we cut these off to be a little bit shorter, um, what we're gonna do is mark the center of each one of the spindles, and we're gonna put a screw, uh, which I chose like a two and a half inch screw, down the direct center of these, and then we're gonna cut the screw head off. And once we do that, we're actually gonna use an existing that was put in right here by some uh, brads. I think these maybe the were, were originally meant to sit on the ground, um, but we're gonna take this screw and actually just screw it straight down into this hole. Now that I have the entire planter box put together with the legs, I wanted to paint it. So before I did that, I wanted to make sure that I had a fun little stencil for the front of it. So I used my Cricut to make a stencil that said the word herbs on it. When I press this button, the mat is going to load in the Cricut. And then I have my Cricut set to vinyl. And I'm going to come over here. I've already selected that I want to cut out. I'm cutting out the word herbs. And then if I click the C, it's going to cut it out. And this is just black contact paper from Walmart. And I'm going to use that as my template. So it's just cheap paper. You don't have to waste your regular vinyl when you're doing templates like this. And you can either use the letters directly on your piece or you can cut it out and use the outside. I'm actually going to be using the letters today. Next, I'm just going to place the herb letters in the center of my box on the front side. And then I wanted some kind of herbs on the side and I didn't cut anything out, but I found these little stickers that were on just a Dollar Tree sticker set and I thought they kind of looked like leaves or herbs. So I'm gonna put those on and use those as a stencil as well. Okay, so for my paint technique for this, I wanted it to be very kind of whitewashed and um, not very much paint on it at all. So what I did was I took the Waverly white chalk paint and I added about equal parts water in with the chalk paint. And I really didn't use much because for this piece, I'm not gonna need a lot of paint. And I just mixed those two together. From there, when I apply the paint, I'm gonna start with the legs and I'm just going to brush the paint on. It's water watered down and then I'm going to take a rag and pull the majority of that paint off. I want to be able to see the underneath coming through quite a bit. 
I'm going to do the same thing on my planter box. So I'm just going to lightly brush the paint on and then I'm gonna immediately follow that with my rag, pulling the paint off as best as I can. I'm smearing the paint and I'm just going to do this until I have my desired look. So keep painting on and pulling paint off until it looks the way you want it to look. I'm also trying to even out the top with the legs because they have a different finish to it. So I'm just going to kind of add paint until I think they look, you know, they're not going to look matching, but they'll look good together. From there, my girls came in and they helped me to complete the back and the sides of the planter box. So now I'm going to take off the letters that say herbs on the front as well as the stickers. When I pulled off the stickers, I wasn't in love with it. So I decided that I was gonna add a little bit more paint and pull it off, not completely, because I thought when I added a little bit of paint and pulled that off, it you could kind of see them, but they weren't as prominent as the word herbs. So once I added a little bit more paint, I ended up liking the look. Next, I took the planter box outside and it was time to add our plants. I grabbed these plants at Walmart. We planted dill, thyme, parsley, and basil in our planter box. So I just added dirt to the base and then my girls helped me with adding in all of the plants. I think this is such a fun project to do with your kids. I love having my kids help me with any kind of planting projects and they had so much fun doing it. And now they can help me with being responsible for watering it throughout the summer season. And I think that this final project is amazing. I think it's such an inexpensive herb garden and I love the way it turned out. guys let me know below what your favorite project was I can't choose I mean I love the flowers and I love the herb garden but I also love the clock so this is probably one of my favorite trash to treasures that I've done but let me know below which project was your favorite and if you haven't watched our last trash to treasure video I'm gonna link it right here so you guys can go watch that one next and I'll talk to you in our next video bye